I think there's a, a misunderstanding about what the hammer needs to be in a drug court um, and a mental health court. I mean, I have 2,200 offenders approximately that I monitor and supervise, and <clears throat> the, the hammer is really a felony uh, always held with it the possibility of either state prison or um, 16 months in jail uh, or longer, whereas a misdemeanor, the maximum punishment is a year in jail. But in terms of motivating people, uh, I have never found that punishment uh, works at all. And to me, it's really not what the hammer is. It's how do you motivate somebody to do something they may not want to do. Uh, and you don't need as heavy a hammer as sending someone to state prison, because if you think about it, if your goal is to reduce recidivism and have somebody improve their life, if the outcome, if they don't do well, is you just send them to prison, well then why did you start? You know, if, if that's the way you're going to end it up. You have to give people multiple chances I don't agree with the, uh, for example, I find flash incarceration as it exists in California is really not a very good tool because 10 days in jail doesn't mean anything unless it's related to something someone hasn't done. Now, and then there has to be follow-up of what are they expected to do and then you need to reward them. What we have learned in drug courts throughout the country is that you need to give six to seven rewards for every one sanction. Now, if you think about that, the real lesson is you're going to get more out of people. They're going to do better in their lives if you encourage them than if you just hold threats over their heads that you never follow through on or you do follow through on or you just slam them in jail.